Hi, we're going to use this video to discuss the relationship between pH, pKa, and how it applies to the extraction that you're doing in the lab in these two weeks. So we can have a carboxylic acid, which when it is neutral, will be soluble in an organic solvent. Carboxylic acids and any other organic compound can have the relative, their relative acidities measured and reported using pKa. So pKa is a unit that gives us a measure of the strength of an acid. The pKa of a carboxylic acid is about 5. That's a fairly low pKa, and that means that a carboxylic acid is fairly acidic, which means that it can be deprotonated by a base such as sodium hydroxide. The base is going to remove the proton on the oxygen, giving us a charged carboxylate. Because of that negative charge on the oxygen, this carboxylate will be water-soluble. Because acid-base reactions are in equilibrium, we have to know how much sodium hydroxide or how much H plus is present in a solution in order to know whether most of the molecules in that solution will be in the carboxylic acid form, the neutral form, or whether most of the molecules will be in the carboxylate form. And this is where the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation comes in. So what I've done in this diagram is I've set the pKa for the acid to be 5, AH corresponds to the neutral acid, A minus corresponds to the carboxylate. We can see that when we have this pKa of 5, which corresponds to the carboxylic acid, and a pH of around 11 or 12, essentially all the molecules are in the conjugate base form. Now if we look over to the right, when we have that same carboxylic acid and carboxylate equilibrium, and now we acidify, so we add HCl, which is going to add a proton to the oxygen, making it neutral again, at a pH of 1, so a high concentration of H plus in solution. Essentially, all the molecules are in the neutral form. So at a pH of 1, we expect this carboxylic acid to be organic soluble. At a pH of about 12, 11 or 12, we expect that species to be water soluble. Now, other organic molecules, such as the ketone shown, this particular one has a pKa of 20, meaning that pretty much whichever pH range we're at, all the molecules, or essentially all the molecules, are going to be in the neutral form, meaning they're going to be organic soluble. We can see something similar with amines. So amines, which have a pKa somewhere between 10 and 11, will be protonated in that situation, and so it will be water-soluble. When they are deprotonated by a base, they become neutral, and so now it would be organic-soluble. Acid adds a proton to the nitrogen, reversing that equilibrium. So because the pKa of the protonated amine is between 10 and 11, even at a neutral pH, and certainly at an acidic pH, most of the molecules are going to be in the protonated form. What you're doing in the lab is what's known as a reactive extraction, meaning that we're separating a mixture of molecules like the carboxylic acid and the ketone, and we're doing so by doing acid-base reactions. So in the first reaction, we add 10% sodium hydroxide solution, which puts the pH at about 11. That means that the carboxylic acid will be deprotonated and be in the salt or O- form. It is now going to be water-soluble. The ketone because it's going to be neutral, essentially all the pH ranges we're seeing is going to remain in the organic phase because it remains neutral. So while we start with both of these molecules being organic soluble, and that's where we see them both here in, dichlor in dichloromethane, when we add the sodium hydroxide in water, now the carboxylate is going to be those little squares in that layer, water soluble, whereas the neutral ketone is going to remain in the organic solution. Note that dichloromethane is more dense than water, and so it's the lower layer in this case. Other organic solvents that are not halogenated, and so they don't have chlorines or bromines or iodines, for example, ethyl acetate, well, they would be less dense than water, so they would float on top of the water. Dichloromethane is below the water. So those are the molecules of the ketone in the solution, in the liquid of dichloromethane. So now what you're going to do is open up this stopcock, which is going to allow the bottom layer to drain out. And you're going to have an Erlenmeyer flask under here. 
And now what you're going to have is a solution. Oh, and that's what's happened over here. So now you have a pure solution of the ketone. You could evaporate the dichloromethane to get just a pure, just pure ketone. You still have this compound in water, the carboxylic acid. So the next step that you're going to do is just take this carboxylate, remember that corresponds to the O- over here, add concentrated hydrochloric acid to it, do an extraction with dichloromethane, and when you add concentrated hydrochloric acid, it adds the proton, makes the carboxylic acid neutral, so now this is going to dissolve in the organic phase. So you can do a second extraction, and what you're going to end up with is a flask, dichloromethane, and then you'll have the carboxylic acid molecules in that. So because you'll have one flask with the ketone, one flask with the carboxylic acid, you've performed a separation by an extraction method, and you've done so in, by doing organic reactions. So overall in this section, we saw the importance of intermolecular forces, van der Waals, dipole-dipole, and hydrogen bonds, as they apply to boiling points, melting points, and TLCs. And we saw the idea that like dissolves like, so that organic compounds dissolve in organic solvents, except for molecules with lots of hydrogen bonding relative to their size, and ions. And then we saw through extraction that you can deprotonate a carboxylic acid to make a carboxylate, and you can protonate an amine to make an ammonium.